Funding for Inner Compass is provided by Calvin College. The life that's unfolding. The world that awaits. Gifts that are yours to explore. And God's to use. It's all happening here at Calvin. Welcome to Inner Compass. I'm Shirley Hoekstra. Sexual assault is scary, and we feel we don't know much about it, and it's mysterious. Do victims make it happen? Are perpetrators just nice guys who have been led astray? Today, our expert is going to talk about how prevention of sexual assault is a community issue. Join us on Inner Compass. From the campus of Calvin College, this is Inner Compass, exploring how people use faith and ethics to guide them through critical issues of today. My guest today is Stephen Thompson, Associate Professor and Sexual Aggression Services Coordinator at Central Michigan University. He researches, consults, lectures, testifies, and writes about sexual assault for institutions across the country. Welcome, Steve. Thank you very much for having me. You know, there's a lot of myths about sexual assault, and a lot of them have to do with the way women dress mm -hmm. or where they put themselves. What's the myth that bothers you the most? Oh boy, you got like five hours. Yeah. I think, you know, as I look at this, I, I've researched and I've had my graduate assistants research it, and when you really look at the courts and, and our culture, you can base these myths on three males, believe it or not. All the myths come back to three males. Now three you, persons? And when you're three, talking about males, you're talking about three, three males, men. Three men. Okay. You being in law would have heard of Lord Hale. Right. In the 1700s, Lord Hale in Great Britain, there was a quote. I saw this in the Harvard Law Review two years ago. Wow. He said, rape, easy to accuse, difficult to defend. So what that meant was it's ah. easy for a woman to accuse me. Right. How can I possibly defend myself? Right. I, in fact, that puts the man as the victim. Absolutely right. Now, I'm, I investigate sexual assault all the time, and the fact is is that there's more evidence in a rape case generally than there is when somebody has their, their card stolen. Well, and now you've got DNA. You might have yeah. injury. Um, you certainly mm -hmm. have uh, testimony. Right. So, so there was no research that substantiated Lord Hale's attitudes. It's just what this okay. guy thought. So way back when they made the yeah. man the victim. Then this fuzzy-haired guy named Sigmund Freud came on the scene. Yes, we all heard of him. Yes, and Sigmund Freud said women are confused about their sexuality. Women say no when they do, in fact, mean yes. Right. Women fantasize about rape. Now show me the research then or now. It didn't exist then. In fact, it's just the opposite now. But that's what this guy thought. And that's gotten into the culture. Sure it has. Because right. don't you hear all the time, well, women always say no when they don't mean it. Right, guys? Right. I hear right. that all that's the time. Right. So when somebody's going into the court, they're thinking, well, there's more burden of proof on women because it's easy for her to accuse me. How can I possibly defend myself? And everybody knows that women want this. And then this third guy comes Well, and let's just go with the no. The newest hmm. message has been no means no. But right. the reason you had to say no means no goes back to Freud. Absolutely. No meant yes. That's right. right. Um, then the third guy came on the scene, which is what you were addressing, dress. This guy right. back in the 60s named Amir said he did this research, and as you know, when, when you know, if I have an hypothesis, I can prove whatever I want. So if, I think, research, this, right. if I think this, I'll skew my research to go that way. Right. So Amir felt that what a woman wore and how she behaved did in fact attract a rapist. Of course, his research was done at night when people were going to bars and all that, but we won't get there. Well, that's a common myth that actually women that. ask for it. If mm -hmm. you don't wear... Mm -hmm. If you if you wore things that were up at your neck, don't show your cleavage, don't have midriffs, don't wear short things, you will not be raped. And then there'd be no more rape though too, right? Right, so that's what should happen. So if all women behave that way, there'd be no rape because the poor guys couldn't help themselves. And is that true? Uh, absolutely no. not. That's right. Uh, so I did this study when I was in New Mexico and we took a model and I had her approach the camera and on the right side of the screen she was dressed very prim and proper, mm -hmm. uh, hair up, uh, three-piece suit. Left side, I asked her to dress very, like she's going out to the bar. Very okay, seductive. Okay, thank you. Okay. I, I did this. And this in is in your study. Describe this a little bit more. So you're actually having two people walk up? Yeah, no. What I did was in Albuquerque, Al, when I was in Albuquerque, we got some money to hire this model and to do this. And it was limited research. I know that. Mm -hmm. But we had a split screen, same model, lighting, demeanor, everything was the same. Okay. Everything the same. Okay. Only difference was how she how she, how she looked. Yeah, so appearance. this side of the screen, she was prim and proper. This side, very seductive. Okay. I put this in front of 20, I think, between Las Lunas Prison and Santa Fe Prison, I only had like 25 rapists. So it was a, a small number. But they number, were rapists. But they were convicted rapists. So I had, them, I had her approach and I said to the rapist. On the screen. Mm -hmm, I had them one at a time, sit in front of this. 
And I said, which one, all things equal, would you go for? And only one went for seductive. 24 out of 25 went for prim and proper. And when you ask them why, it's so simple. This one has been around the block a time or two in their mind. Ah. This one, sexual aggression is about power and control. They felt they could have more power and more control over this three-piece suit person than, than this, this one. one. It's not about sex. No. It's about power and control. That's what rape always is about. Sexual yeah. assault always is about. Sure. It is has nothing to do with love or no. uh, real uh, sexual uh, equality between a man and a woman. No, it's not. Women are objects. Women are things. Right. Now this is usually the stranger when you describe that that stranger rate, but is it does does that apply to the seduction clothing versus prim and proper clothing to let's say the familiar rape or the date rape situation? Thank you for using the word familiar. Yes, yeah. it does. It's the same thing. Is I it mean, the same? It's power and aggression in that power situation. Power and control. And and typically the the man who assaults somebody that they know, the familiar goes for somebody two to three years younger because they're going for people that are going to be flattered by their attention. That's why at, at colleges, the, the number one target are freshman females. And is it freshman males targeting them? No. It's junior, senior males right. where it's off campus where this guy's got this great line of bull. Right. Uh, she's younger. She's new to campus. Right. That means she doesn't have a lot of support with her roommates. He's the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's all a plan. It's a seven-step process that I... I so this in sounds intentional. What you're Absolutely saying is that is a predator, intense. maybe, uh, you've used the word in your literature, score, the predator goes out and says, look, I'm going to score tonight, and actually surveys a crowd mm -hmm. and picks people. Mm -hmm. He's a predator, and I'm glad you used that word. See, there, there's many ways to cross-reference sex predators. Okay. Is this a state or is this a trait? A state rapist is somebody that does it one time, does not get back what they expected to get back, and they don't repeat. For so, whatever reason. So you so can have a killer, but he doesn't get the gratification. It's just not something. He thought something would occur. Right. He thought it would be really whatever it was he wanted, his motive, and it didn't come out that way. So one time only. And I don't, I don't have much experience with those because my experience is more with what's called trait, where they are serial in nature, mm -hmm. where they, they like what they're doing, they plan it, prepare for it, and they repeat it until there's a time where they don't want to do it anymore. This is hard to believe about people that we know, mm -hmm. that, that this trait exists, mm -hmm. that the interactions that a male will have with a female is all about a power and aggression relationship versus anything that has to do with relationship. Mm -hmm. I think, don't you think that's why women are in disbelief when it happens? Because they're thinking this was about a relationship. The, the mm -hmm. college man you described where, mm -hmm. you know, he's a, big man on campus, he's maybe smooth, he's got mm -hmm. a, a line, he makes you feel oh, good, yeah, he good flatters, right? Absolutely. So then how, that was, in her mind, maybe about relationship, and you're saying that was premeditated setup. Oh yeah, it's not a relationship, it's a conquest. And, and by the way, when I use the word score and conquest, those are the gentle words, that's not how he refers to it, but that's a more correct way okay. for me to do it on television or whatever. It's right. very graphic what he'll say, but absolutely right. And also, she feels responsible anyway. You Why know? does she feel responsible? Because I think as a culture, we've made her feel that it's your fault for what I do. We, you, we have so many excuses for sexual assault. Oh, he had uh, too, too much to drink. She teased. There was some research done that was given to high school and college males and females. And the bottom line, it was really disturbing, was the question was asked, is it ever okay for a man to force a woman to have sex? Right. Over 50% of females said, yes, it is. Then when you ask for a narrative, well, if you said yes, when is it okay? Right. If she teased him, if she let him on, if they'd had sex before, and if he spent a lot of money on her. This is when women say it's okay. Right. And then the last question, if you answered yes, would this ever happen to you? No. no. It's always somebody else. Right. So part of the problem is one second before realization sets in that this, this woman is being sexually assaulted, she had that mindset, it'll never happen to me, it'll always be somebody else, people bring it on themselves. So now once she's sexually assaulted, what's the likelihood of her coming into the system telling people? Because if, if it was reversed, would she believe? So she wouldn't. Did she, do the people when this happens to them, the women, um, who say, well, it's maybe my fault, I teased, do they ever, recall feeling suspicious about the person who's flattering them mm -hmm. or coming on to them? That's a great question. Um, when 
There are five stages of, of rape trauma. Okay. Most people think there's only three, but when I, fortunately when I go in a witness stand, I talk about two things as an expert witness. One is what I call the voice. What's the voice? The voice is you're walking out to your car tonight. Right. You see somebody, something makes you feel uncomfortable. Right. It's I a gut feeling. Yeah, I don't know. Or a voice in your head. Right. It says, and wait I, a minute, watch out. Yeah, I don't know if, if uh, there is a sixth sense. My first martial arts instructor said, Thompson, bad people give off bad energy. I'm not sure if that's true or if our minds are just such incredible microprocessors that we pull all this stuff in. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer in that. And with stranger assault, a lot of times survivors will say, I just had a bad feeling. Okay. With familiar assault, the, one of the primary objectives of this, the, the profile is called the nice guy. That's, right. that's men who rape people they know. Right. One of the prime goals is to get alcohol or drug into right. her system. Right, because you want that voice to be dulled. You want Absolutely. that kind of consciousness. Or to not exist at all. All right. So it is a plan. So It is so unusual to find somebody sexually assaulted by a familiar where they have not been what's called double shotted or dosed with GHB or some uh, benzodiazepine like Rohypnol or Valium. It's very unusual because much like a, a ditch digger uses a shovel as a right. tool of the trade, Nice guy rapists use alcohol and drugs. Because they as a want tool. the inhibitions down, and the right? control up. And the control up. Mm -hmm. Those are the things. So if you if you're at a party and someone you think is being nice to you by either mm -hmm. buying you drinks mm -hmm. or getting you involved in a game, a drinking game, mm -hmm. that should be a red flag. It should be. Now, okay. If you go to a party, and, and you know, you as women have been told for years, don't do this, don't do right. that. And I resent that. I you're resent responsible. That. I think there's a difference between assault avoidance and assault prevention. Okay, tell us about On that. On your campus, you could have, let's say you have a, a serial rapist in your community. Mm -hmm. And you could say, okay, we're going to turn every light on. We're going to bring in lights. We're going to have SWAT teams behind every tree. Right. We're going to teach women all these martial arts and everybody's going to carry a weapon. Right. Great. It's not going to stop rape by one. It's not going to cut the numbers by one Why not? Rape. All it's going to do is make it so you've avoided me. If I'm the predator okay. and I can't find you to be targetable, and the first thing all sex predators do, whether it's stranger or familiar, is called target selection. If for whatever reason I don't find you targetable, find you, someone else. I will find somebody okay. else. So what we have to do in our culture is certainly focus on what we can do to help you reduce your risk, but the, the primary focus has to be on me. Right. Why do men rape? And yes, I know women assault, but the numbers are so... 90%, so, right, of women get rape? Uh, 90% target of targets or women. more are women and right, children. 99.9% right. .9 of the sex predators are males. Right. We've got to get at why do men rape. Once we get at that, once we get the, at the objectification of women and right. you are a thing, right. then we're going to start to see the numbers go down. But we're not addressing that because it's not the politically correct thing to do. Right. It's far better to say, okay... We're going to come to Calvin College and put all these blue lights around. Right. We're going to teach rad classes, and that lets mom and dad think that we're really doing some good things, which it's not bad. Right. It's, I mean, it's necessary. Doing, it's, it's necessary. Right. But What's in the other addition part of it? to that, we've got to train the males. We've got to get into broadcast communication arts, talk to people about what about the kind of commercials do you put out there? Can what that about change, education? though, this trait of wanting to have relationships that are centered with power and aggression? I mean, what you're talking I about is so. the ordinary guy then. I mean, are we talking about the ordinary guy who can sort of be educated around not wanting relationships that based on power? I think what we have to address, I'm not sure that we can change predators. I think there's three kinds of men. Okay. I think that there are, there are good men. Mm -hmm. And I will use my gender. There's good yeah. people. But right. I think there's good men that at a party tonight, if some guy's talking about getting a woman drunk to whatever... Score. Yeah, he's going to say, hey, man, that's not cool. Okay. Violence against one woman is violence against all women, and I'm not going to let you do this. He takes it personal. That's a guy in a residence hall, if somebody makes a racial slur, he listens to the voice and says, this isn't right. Right, and speaks up. And speaks up. That takes a lot of courage. It does. Then there's another group that are the predators. I think we can control the predators. I think good men can control them, especially, you know, in some universities where, or groups where this guy needs to surround himself with males that think he's cool. Mm-hmm. Well, if males that are really leaders say, you're not doing this on my team, you're not doing this on our floor, it can control them. I don't know that we can change them so much as but control. But you're saying that there might be a continuum where, there, if, where if this was seen as cool mm -hmm. and he had people saying this is unacceptable, 
yeah, he might be not, able to change his behavior. You're some. not doing it on our watch. Okay, so that's the second kind of person. But then there's a third kind, which is what the zebra represents, and that's the bystander, and that's the, the majority that'll say, I don't do this, I would never do this, but they don't get involved. That's the guy at the party tonight. See, sexual aggression by familiars does not occur in a vacuum. No, it's actually usually party at a party where and, he brags. and, they, and then they isolate the woman. But before they've isolated mm -hmm. this person, it's been packed. Oh, and right? he brags about what he's going to do. Oh, okay. I've dealt with these guys where they'll, hey, listen, you, you kind of distract her. I'm going to dose her drink. Isn't this cool? And, ha ha. Or yeah. isn't this funny? Right. What's going to happen and next? And it's just, it's an object. So it, it happens where other men are there. Okay, and so what those should those men. men do? They've got to stand up and say this isn't right. You know, I use the word, words all the time. Violence against one woman is violence against all. Why'd you call it zebras? Well, I was actually doing a program, and I was watching television. This was about 10 years ago. And I was watching National Geographic. <laughs> and uh, this lion was chasing her to zebras and brought one of the zebras down. And while it was eating it, I was watching that. But then all of a sudden, my eye looked to the top of the screen, and there was the rest of the herd watching this. I mean, mm -hmm. they weren't from me. They were like 20, 30 feet away watching their pal getting eaten. Right. And then the next day and the next day and the next day, another one's brought down and another one. And the stinking herd is that close. And they're, they're probably doing anything about they're it. looking over their shoulders, probably thinking, glad that wasn't me. That was right. Flicka. Nobody liked Flicka anyway. You know, I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> but if one of them would have said, I'm kind of tired charged of this. Too. I'm tired of right. this. Right. Let's let's do something right. about it, but they don't. They right. always think it's somebody else. So at a party tonight, there's a guy that's going to be talking about assaulting some. He's going to be talking about scoring and getting right. her drunk. And other men know about it. And it's up to us to say, this isn't right, man. You don't do that. Right. The burden has been on your gender way too long. And this is really a community issue. And you've addressed how men of lesser status can control men of higher status and bigger stature because maybe I'm at a party and I know this guy's doing something. Maybe I'm the freshman walk-on kicker on a football team and right. this is the middle linebacker. But I know that the behavior of one is in fact the reputation of all of us. So if this middle linebacker is talking about doing something, I don't have much status, but I can get other males of equal status to, hey, listen, if you do this, you could go to jail tomorrow. You could do this, you could do that. And control, that's why I say we can control the predators if we've got enough people that decide to be good men and not spectators. Well, you, well, you change the ratio. You've changed mm -hmm. the power structure. Mm -hmm. So instead of one more powerful male saying, this is what I'm going to do, try to stop me, mm -hmm. and you have some other males who are coming alongside, not just one, two, three, four, five, a culture mm -hmm. on a campus or in an institution that says, we don't put up with that. Absolutely, absolutely that's, right. That's where you get the power And you've got to shared. get the identification right. with with doing the right thing versus the identification with doing nothing. Well, have you seen this work? Uh, absolutely. At our campus at CMU, yes. How I does it work? Seen. I mean, how well, did you change a culture? We started this, uh, the No Zebras program, about five years ago. At CMU, all freshmen and transfer students have to see this program. It's the first weekend of, of classes okay. in the fall. And we know that our numbers have risen as far as number of reported assaults. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a peer advocate group on campus last year that had 280 contacts. They didn't have, you know, I mean, it's just been rising. So often, and it's all anecdotal, but so often we will have people, oh, I want you to know I was at a party on Thursday. I was at the bar and I saw this and I, and I spilled the drink. I told this woman what was going on. I had her friends get her out of there. And we hear this. There's 40 SAPAs there, peer advocates, and we hear this virtually every week. So um, they're sort of on the lookout, and mm -hmm. now they maybe don't know that that drink is. No, but they hear, but they hear the guy it. talking. Right. And there's, there's like 6,000 of these I bracelets. I see you've got a bracelet. Yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things to just get people to think about it's a prompt. looking out for other people. Right. And uh, This looking out for other people, though, has even broader implications. Mm -hmm. Because we should, we talk about being a community here at Calvin, we should want to sort of watch each other's backs, mm -hmm. keep each other safe on a whole lot of issues. Absolutely. And actually a culture of integrity breeds integrity on other things. Cheating, mm -hmm. right? I'm gonna plagiarize something. No, you're not, mm -hmm. don't do that. You know, if you mm -hmm. get a culture of standing up for the truth or what's right, it seems mm -hmm. to me that it could, could have impact across the board. Sure. And then nationally or in business or all sorts of things, the habit of standing up for each other mm -hmm. is one that we want to have happen. Absolutely. I mean, at, at Calvin, you've got freshmen coming in, and, and Gandhi said we have to be the change we want to see. That's what, right. what does your campus community want to see four years from now right. or today? Right. You know, that's the, then you look 
to change to that. Let's talk about when victims report or not report, because mm -hmm. when you have a familiar person rape you, mm -hmm. are the incidences lower for reporting? Nationally, the report rate is 5%. 5% of percent. all rapes. Yeah, I was interviewed recently, and, and somebody that interviewed me said, what would I like to see change before yeah. I die, which I thought was kind of a curious question. I know yeah. I'm old, but <laughs> anyway, uh, I said, I know what you want me to say. Right. You want me to say I want there to be an end to all rape and peace and prosperity. And right. That's nice, but I can't. I can set realistic goals. I said, before I die, if we could simply treat sex crimes like all other crimes, that would be a quantum leap. Well, the interviewer look puzzled. I said, okay, you got, in your community you have a hundred people that are robbed right. coming out of their ATM. You're going to have close to a hundred people report it. You're going to have a hundred people tell family, friends, relatives, law enforcement. And so, so you should report that. That's right. And right. they will report it. And the police will probably respond to that. Right. Now you have a hundred people sexually assaulted, which something far more personal from them is taken than a CD player or an ATM. Right. Only five will report it. That's 95 are not comfortable enough in our culture coming forward. That's abhorrent to me. And what are the, the first two reasons why and what do we do about it? Number one, they don't think anybody's gonna believe them. So so they don't come in. So the it system. goes back to those first three men, the Lord, Lord Hale, Hale, Freud, the, Freud and Mir, that nobody, said, look, no one's gonna believe you. You brought this on yourself. Yep, they, they think nobody's gonna believe them, number one. And actually, the second reason that they don't come forward is they don't think they're gonna be able to do anything about it anyway. They think that nothing will happen, yeah. so it's going I'm to be very be painful, very shameful to go ahead mm -hmm. and do it. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that there's something that we could change in the reporting process or structure? Now there's rape shield laws, there's the YMCA's across the mm -hmm. country or other places that Sames, do a very good job. Absolutely, but still five percent. I think that I think that the system is is responding pretty well. I mean, there's, like at, at universities, a certain number of professors that are an embarrassment to the rest of the professors, right. a certain number of police officers, defense attorneys, prosecutors. Right. But I think the system is responding pretty well. It's the people outside the system. It's when somebody's sexually assaulted and they tell their best friend expecting to get help Let's and their best down, friend right. says, are you sure? Or this is an actual that I dealt with last week. Are you sure you were raped? And then the best friend said, well, he was pretty cute. It could have been worse. Well, and, spa, and also if there's alcohol involved, mm -hmm. doesn't that decrease? I mean, even though a no should be a no and you can't mm -hmm. consent if you're under the influence of alcohol, if there's alcohol, don't you tend to blame yourself a little bit more? I think you tend to blame yourself and other people tend to blame, but where did that come from? Did right. that come from actual or is that coming from the myths that, that women bring it on and men certainly wouldn't plan this. It's just a, it's just sex and poor guy, you know, we don't want to hurt his Well, reputation. this is a low standard for men, right? Mm -hmm. You know, men can't determine when a woman's under the influence or mm -hmm. men should be able to have sex when they want it. <clears throat> And if she really didn't, she would have been in control. Uh -huh. So you have all of these myths starting to play out. Mm -hmm. And then you're really going to get someone in trouble mm -hmm. if you bring this accusation. Sure. So let's just all forget about it. That, uh, but, that's absolutely right. I've dealt with people where a preferential seductive child rapist assaulted their child. And they didn't want to go forward because they were afraid what the community would think about them. Them. You right. know, and, and it's the same thing with survivors. But, you know, understand that... The guy that assaults somebody they know, he's, he's this nice guy. Mm -hmm. he's, people are going to look at him and they're going to look at her right from the get-go and say, well, what's her problem? Right. You know, he's, he's Kobe Bryant. She's Caitlin Faber. What's right. her deal? Right. You know, something such Something's as that. Something's out. What's her motive? Yeah, what's her motive? Right. And so they, they but doubt most, her. But most accusations are not false, are they? No, they're not. Although I bet many people would believe, well, most of them are false. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they've got a motive of attention seeking or mm -hmm. um, they are angry at this person mm -hmm. or it's a relationship gone bad. Mm -hmm. But actually, the number of false complaints a is... A fact is this, that when you look at the FBI or U.S. Bureau of Crime Statistics, they will say that the rate of false accusation, if you have 100 people make a claim of robbery, you're mm -hmm. going to have somewhere between five and eight liars. Right. If you have 100 people come into the system and make a claim of rape, you're going to have five to eight liars. But here's the thing. How many are going to come into the system? It takes well over 1,000 women to be actually raped to get one to come into the system and lie about it. Wow. Because the report rate is so low. Right. You know, we got right. such a low report rate. So we've got all of these assaults that occur. If one comes in, you know, th that's the report rate. Right. False is one in a thousand. I was doing a big statewide thing in Wyoming last uh, three weeks ago. 
And I was really impressed because that was the first statewide police training I'd ever done where somebody didn't get into my face to tell me their favorite false accusation right, stories. Right. What I was getting there was, help me out here. I've got this case. Nobody believes this woman was raped. I believe she was raped. Right. What can I do to gather more information? Right. And I thought, holy cow, that is an incredible leap. Right. So you see some progress being I'm made. I'm seeing at it. progress. Yes. So uh, staying with it, making sure that you can support a woman, say, look, I know this is humiliating for you. I know you're going to have to talk about something very personal. Well, mm -hmm. Let's do it together. Mm -hmm. And this is why uh, rape advocates are advocates so important. Because they stay with the person. Mm -hmm. They say, you can do it. Let's go do it together. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if the men on your floor, if you were in a college setting, or the men in your family said, we stand with you. We believe you. We believe you. That is the that's biggest the thing, to be believed. Okay. Listen to them and be and believe them. That's right. that's what rape survivors want more than, than going to court, more than anything. Is they want that law enforcement officer to believe them, they want their family to believe them, and that prosecutor to believe them, whether right. they get a successful, you know, whether it's successfully tried or not. That's right. the number one thing. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. My guest today has been Stephen Thompson, Associate Professor and Sexual Aggression Services Coordinator at Central Michigan University. I'm Shirley Hoekstra, and thank you for watching Inner Compass. Funding for Inner Compass is provided by Calvin College. The life that's unfolding. The world that awaits. Gifts that are yours to explore. And gods to use. It's all happening here at Calvin.